Models are really tiny in Nomad Sculpt, so if I want to print them first, just make sure you have the grid on. If you don't see the grid, um, you can get the grid here in the shortcuts. Essentially, you just want to hit left or front. Front's probably better. You see the red line, that's the horizon. So we're going to add a box here, because this is about one millimeter, I believe. So this is one millimeter. So right now, this is only maybe like two and then some millimeters. So that's really tiny. So it's not going to work for 3D printing. So let's go here and add a box. And then we'll just use the gizmo to move it over and up to roughly like inside that box. So that's pretty good. So now we have this one box. We're going to go ahead and validate it. So we're just going to use an array so we can stack this box up. So we'll go here. Here we have the box. I'm going to rename this uh, two inches. So this, this is going to be about, I want this to be about two inches tall. So now we're going to do add array in the repeaters. So we've added an array and now you can see one box here. And as you can see here, this says two. These are the two boxes. So if you go more, they're extending out the wrong way and they're staying within inside here. We don't want that. So first we're going to tap fit inside. So now this will allow them to go inside that constraint. But we don't want it to go out that way either. We want it to go up. So we bring this to one. We'll take green and we'll bring that up. And now, as you can see, if I hit front, you can see that it's skipping a box. So that's the offset. Its offset is two. So we're going to take tap on that and just hit one. So now we have three, which matches up here and it's going in the right direction. So now we'll just make it smaller. We'll tap this three and do 50. So I think one inch is about 25 point something millimeters. So I'm doing 50 of these. So that'll be the equivalent of about two inches. So now when I scroll back and I hit front, you'll see that this is two inches. So I'm gonna turn off the grid. We don't really need it anymore. But now I wanna take the snail so I just select all of them, make them bigger. Also, if you want to see how I'm how he's maintaining staying on that surface, all you have to do is uh, select everything and then hit pivot. And when you tap pivot, you can adjust this. So you just adjust it until it's right on the bottom layer. So all I did was select select all these layers, and then I move the pivot for all of them down to the bottom, and the bottom will stay at the bottom. When I make it bigger, everything will get bigger, but that bottom level will stay the same. So that's just with, I just move the pivot. If it's in the middle, then it, it'll all get bigger around that pivot. And that's what we don't want. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just gonna continue to make this bigger. Cause I think I want this nail to be about two inches, maybe a little more than two inches. Actually, we'll turn the grid on just so you can kind of see. So now the top of that eyelash is about two inches. So that's, you know, um, I don't know, maybe my, maybe my, these little pods are about two inches. So that's a bit small. So maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger than two inches. So maybe something like that. So it's a little higher than two inches. Um, and I think that is fine. So I'm just gonna hide this. We don't need this anymore. And then I will just export each of these layers as STLs. So like I'll take the shell and I'll go to the file, export STL. Make sure you have selected because you just want this one selected. Export STL and you can either export them to your computer or save them. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna overwrite all these because I already saved them, but they were way too small. So I need to resave them. So this is gonna be the snail. Was this the shell? I think this was the shell. So we'll save this state, the snail shell, replace it. And now I just have to go through and save all these STLs so it maintains the same size. The other reason that this is good is because when I'm printing, if it's already the size I want, then it will stay that size when we print it. And let's say I print one and the teeth break or the eyes break, I can just send another one to the printer and it's the exact same size. Of course, I could always print from the slicing software again, like I could just open up that file and print it. But if there's something wrong with the actual model, 
and let's say I needed I needed to go back and adjust uh, something in the tooth or whatever. Um, I can do that and then I can export it and it's the same exact size. Rather than me, if it's smaller, then I have to do it, bring it over to the slicer and then make it bigger there. That's what we don't want because then it's not going to match. So if you make it bigger in Nomad, then all your parts will be consistent throughout the slicing and throughout the print. So that's the, that's the reason why it's good to size them vaguely what you want in Nomad. All right, so I'm gonna export these and uh, yeah, I'll be printing this guy up soon. I did him once, but uh, I gave that one away. So I'm gonna make another one and try out these new keys and cuts. So hopefully this will be Snail 2.0. All right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. Oh, and I'll show you this one in Blender because it looks, the Blender version looks really good. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to go more in depth, then definitely check out my Skillshare classes where I am a top teacher. I have about 50 classes, both Procreate and Nomad Sculpt. I also have a few classes on Udemy. So if you want to learn more or you just like my style, you like the way I teach, you want to support me, those are some other places that you can do it. Thanks again. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video.